you can be really proud of your own top quality black and white prints, especially when you display them for others to enjoy. Your best prints can win prizes and the admiration of your friends. A good black and white print can communicate with clarity and set moods. In this program, we'll show you how to make better black and white prints by using the advanced techniques of dodging, burning in, and combination printing. We'll also show you how to add those finishing touches to your prints by using texture, toning, retouching, and mounting techniques. Let's start with this subject. It has not been modified by any of the techniques we just mentioned. We'll call all unmodified prints straight prints throughout this program. Now let's discuss how you can improve this straight print by dodging, which is really selective exposure reduction. Notice the dark shadow across the man's face in the straight print on the left. His face has been lightened in the print on the right by the technique of dodging or selectively reducing exposure on just his face. You'll need some simple tools for dodging. You can buy dodging kits from your photo retailer or make your own with wire and a variety of small cardboard patches or paddles and some tape. While you're exposing the paper, use the dodging tool to shade some of the exposure from the man's face. Let's say the overall print exposure was 20 seconds. Try using the dodging tool for only about 10 seconds of the total time. You have to move the dodging tool continuously during the exposure to blend this shadow into your print. If you keep the dodging tool perfectly still, you'll see a distinct image of the shadow, such as this, on your print. Notice how the darker corners in the print on the right seem to emphasize the main subjects. The straight print is on the left, and the corners of the print on the right have been darkened by adding exposure to just the corners. Selectively adding exposure is called burning in. To darken the corners by burning them in, first expose the print on the easel for the full time, say 20 seconds. Then turn the timer on again for another 20 second exposure and use the dodging tool to shade light from the two girls. This means that only the corners get the extra exposure. Remember to keep the tool constantly moving to blend the additional exposure into the corners. Subjects with lots of light tones often look more attractive with lighter corners. You can lighten the corners of a print with a technique called vignetting. The straight print is on the left, and the vignetted print was made by projecting the image through a hole in a piece of cardboard onto an easel. Here's how it's done. First, you'll need to draw the size and shape of hole you'll need while the cardboard is held several inches above the easel. Now cut the hole out of the cardboard, and you're ready to make your vignetted print. Hold the cardboard between the lens and easel and project the image right through the hole onto the photo paper. Again, keep the cardboard moving constantly during the exposure to create an even blend of the picture edges. Here's another opportunity to use vignetting to get just the picture you want. Let's say you've been looking for an informal portrait of Marcia, but the picture of her that you like the best has someone else in it. With vignetting, you can isolate Marcia and create an informal portrait out of a snapshot. Just enlarge the picture of Marcia to the size you want and project the image through the hole in the cardboard. Keep the cardboard moving for the entire print exposure. Here's a way you can make better prints of subjects that are in both bright sunlight and deep shade. The straight print on the left has areas that are too light and shadows that are too dark. The print on the right has been corrected by using the technique of burning in. You'll need a piece of cardboard larger than your print and cut to the right shape to help you with the burning in. Once you've framed your image on the easel, you can make this burning in tool by placing it on a box or something a few inches above the easel. 
Now project the image on the cardboard and draw a line that separates the dark and light subject areas of the picture. Next, cut the cardboard along this line and you've made your burning in tool. You've made a test print and here are the exposure times that you'll need. The dark side of the print needs only 10 seconds and the bright side requires about 30 seconds. The trick, of course, is to make both exposures blend together without a noticeable line between them. Next, turn out the lights. Put your photo paper in the easel and expose the entire print for 10 seconds. This will be the correct exposure for the dark areas. Now set the timer for an additional 20 seconds and expose only the bright side of the print. Use your burning in tool to block any additional light from hitting the dark side of your print because it already has enough exposure. Keep the burning in tool moving slightly during the entire 20 seconds to blend the images. Chances are you may not get it perfect the very first time. This print, for instance, has a noticeable dark area. The burning in tool was held too far to the left and wasn't moved enough during the exposure. This picture, titled Peak, is a real prize winner. But believe it or not, it can be improved. You can direct more viewer attention to those big, beautiful eyes by subduing the background. Let's darken it by adding more exposure to just the background. Now, Peak has even more impact. You can use tone psychology to improve your printmaking by remembering that light tones tend to project and become prominent. On the other hand, dark tones recede and are generally less important. So the dark background tends to emphasize this child's face. Can you imagine how much better this picture would be if you could include an airplane landing at this field? This time exposure was taken after sunset and there just wasn't enough light to record a fast moving airplane. Here's the airplane that we'd like to add to the airport night scene. We photograph the plane with a fast shutter speed in the middle of the day. The technique of combining two pictures such as these is called double printing or combination printing. First, you should decide exactly where you want the airplane in the final picture, so you'll need to do some sketching. Project the airport negative onto a plain piece of paper on the easel. Adjust the cropping the way you want it and trace the important parts of the picture on the paper. Now replace the airport negative with the airplane negative in the enlarger and project it onto the same sketch on the easel. Adjust the size and position of the airplane and trace it on your drawing. Now you're ready to make a test print, but first let's discuss the type of paper to use. You can choose any of seven different contrast grades on the same paper by using a selective contrast paper and contrast filters. You'll find it convenient to stock just one box of paper instead of several boxes of different contrast grades. If you're using selective contrast photographic paper, you can print each part of your combination print with a different contrast. For instance, use a number one and a half or low contrast filter for the night scene and a number four or high contrast filter for the airplane. The high contrast filter will help the airplane print as a silhouette. Next, make a test print of the airplane. Expose your test with the proper contrast for the silhouette, process it, and choose the correct exposure. Now, put the airport negative in the enlarger and adjust your enlarger until the projected image exactly fits your sketch in the easel. Expose your test print with the proper contrast filter, process the print, and choose the best exposure. Now you're ready to try a combination print. The airport negative is already in the enlarger, so double check the position with your sketch and expose your print. After the exposure, remove the photo paper from the easel and put it in a light tight box or drawer. Make sure you remember the orientation of the paper in the easel because you'll have to put it back in the easel in exactly the same position for the next exposure. 
You can easily remember correct paper orientation by simply marking the back of your paper with a T for the top edge. You can use a pencil to mark fiber-based papers and a ballpoint pen to mark resin-coated papers. Now put the airplane negative in your enlarger. Put your sketch in the easel and adjust the enlarger and easel until you have the airplane in just the right place. Turn the room lights off and put the same piece of photographic paper back in the easel in the same position and add the airport exposure to the print. Now process the print and evaluate the results. The chances are you won't be satisfied with your first attempt at combination printing. In this case, the background is a little too light for a night effect, so add more exposure to the airport. The plane is also too close to the horizon, so realign it and let's try again. That's it. That's your final print. It does take some patience, but this and other silhouette type subjects are relatively easy to double print because they do not require any blending of the images. Now let's try combination printing with a subject that will require careful image blending. Here's a sailboat print that's pretty good, but it needs that extra touch to make it outstanding. Let's use some printmaker's magic or combination printing to add the extra touch of soft clouds to the clear sky of this sailboat print. First, make sure the two subjects you want to combine look good together. For instance, the sunlight should fall on both subjects from the same angle. Now use the registration drawing technique we mentioned earlier to align both pictures on the easel. You'll also need to make a pair of dodging tools, one for the sky and the other for the sailboats. To make these tools, project the sailboat negative onto a piece of cardboard about two inches above the easel. Trace a line on the cardboard that separates the boats from the sky. Now cut the cardboard carefully along the line that separates the boats from the sky. You now have the pair of dodging tools you'll need to combine the sailboats and the clouds on one sheet of photographic paper. We'll use these tools right after we make two test prints. Make test prints of each picture to determine the correct exposures. Make sure you've placed the proper contrast filter under the lens for both test prints. In this case, the best sailboat exposure is between the 10 and 20 second exposure strip, so 15 seconds is about right. The clouds look about right with a 10 second exposure. Now let's combine these two pictures. After you've registered the sailboat picture on the easel, project it onto the photographic paper and use your dodging tool to shade any light from falling on the sky area. Keep the dodging tool moving and in tight alignment with the sails and horizon during the 15 second exposure. Mark the exposed paper with a T for top and put it in a light tight drawer. Now let's repeat the same procedure with the cloud negative. Unlike the sailboat picture, the cloud negative does not have a horizon or any other reference to guide the alignment of your dodging tool. Here's how you can solve that situation. Raise or lower your enlarger until the clouds exactly fit your easel registration drawing. Use the drawing as a guide to mark the borders of your easel with an arrow at each end of the picture horizon. These arrows are your guide for aligning the second half of your dodging tool. Turn the lights out and replace the photographic paper in the easel with the T on the top for correct orientation. Align the dodging tool with the horizon arrows on the easel and start the exposure for the clouds. Shade the lower half of the picture and keep the dodging tool moving during the 10 second exposure. Now process the print and let's see the results. The chances are your first attempt won't be quite the way you want it. The sailboats look good, but the clouds are too light. So increase the exposure for the clouds on your next print. You can also see a shadow effect where the sails meet the sky. So try blending the clouds closer to the sails. You've done it. The print exposures are well balanced and you've blended the two pictures together very well. Of course, you'll get better at combination printing with experience. Now let's talk about composite printing. You may have an opportunity to express a theme with a group of photographs. 
This is a fun project for your school yearbook or club publication. The simplest way to combine these prints is to group them together and paste them down. However, let's use the combination printing techniques we just learned to blend these seven pictures into a composite titled Seniors Summer. The key to composite printing is a puzzle type dodging tool. First enlarge each picture to the size you want and project and position each image on a piece of cardboard on the easel. Trace the position of each picture on the cardboard. Then cut out the shape of each picture and loosely tape them together again. Hold this puzzle over your photographic paper and open each picture section for each separate exposure. Remember to move the entire puzzle during each exposure for proper blending. Now let's see the results. Add the title to the plain sky area of the print and your composite is ready for display or your publication. You can use the script book that accompanies this program to review the details of combination and composite printing. This wedding picture is more than just a simple record of an event. You can add to the artistic feeling in pictures such as this by exposing your prints through a texture screen, as we did with the print on the right. Most texture screens are large sheets of film of a continuous pattern. Simply lay this film over your photographic paper on the easel. Then expose your print right through the texture screen. Now let's talk about some creative techniques you can achieve with a few easy to use chemicals. These prints were made from the same negative. Notice the improved sparkle to an otherwise gray day picture on the right. It has been hand bleached with a solution called Kodak Farmer's Reducer. When you're just learning this technique, you'll want to make a few spare prints to practice on. Kodak Farmer's Reducer is a two-part bleach. Mix the two parts according to the directions on the package and dilute to the strength you want by adding water. You should start with a diluted solution until you become acquainted with the technique of hand bleaching. An undiluted bleach solution will work very rapidly and will be difficult to control. You should bleach prints that have been completely processed. Put your dry print on a smooth, flat surface near some running water. Use a brush to dab the bleach on small areas of your print. You will see the area begin to fade, and when it's light enough, wipe it off immediately with the wet sponge or rinse it in a tray of water to stop the bleaching. If you want to lighten large areas of the print, you can use larger brushes or cotton swabs to apply the bleach. You can confine the bleaching within areas that have straight borders by applying masking tape along the edges. After the bleaching, carefully peel off the tape, fix your print for a minute or so, then wash and dry it in the normal manner. A subject such as this just yearns for the color of the afternoon sun streaming through a giant forest. You can add overall color to black and white prints by using various toners. The print on the right has been chemically toned in Kodak Poly Toner. The straight print on the left is on a warm paper. However, subjects such as this winter scene are often enhanced by a cool blue tone. We achieved this effect on the right by using Kodak Blue Toner. Make sure you follow the directions carefully for the toner you select. Various photographic papers have different toning reactions, so check the instruction sheet that is packaged with Kodak papers for the recommended toners. All prints should be adequately washed before they're toned to prevent stains. You can find detailed instructions for using Kodak Poly Toner and Kodak Blue Toner in the back of the script book that accompanies this program. Now let's discuss some finishing touches that will make your prints look even better. Dust or scratches on your negative will probably show up as objectionable white spots on your prints. You can conceal these spots by using a very fine brush and spotting dyes or pigments sold by photo retailers. If you're using the dyes, place a few drops of concentrated black dye on a white dish and dilute with water to match the tone of the area surrounding the spot. Dampen the brush with the dye and carefully touch the spot lightly until it blends with the surrounding area. 
You can use the concentrated dye without dilution for black areas of the print. Practice your dye application techniques before you try this on your final print. The technique is similar if you're using the pigments. Moisten the black and white pigments with a drop or two of water and mix them to the shade you need. If the spot is in a black area of the print, use the black pigment without mixing. Now pick up a small amount of pigment on the tip of your brush and lightly touch the spot several times with a steady dabbing motion. You can also get dyes and pigments to match most of the print colors of toned prints. Remember to apply the dyes or pigments in small amounts and with a stippling motion. Small spots are easier than scratches to retouch. In general, apply too little rather than too much dye or pigment. You can use either the dyes or pigments effectively. However, you can easily remove the pigments from your print if you should make a mistake. The dyes are permanent, so you can't remove them in case of errors. You'll get better at this technique with practice, and the results are well worth your efforts. Incidentally, you'll save a lot of print retouching time if you try to eliminate dust and dirt from your negatives before you make a print. You can use a soft camel's hair brush for removing most dust from your negatives. If the dust tends to cling to the negative, you may have to use a static eliminator type of brush. If you want to display your prints, you can add that final touch of class by mounting them on stiff cardboard or a matte board available at an artist's supply store. You can use Kodak rapid mounting cement or double-sided tape if your prints are small. If your prints are 8 by 10 inches or larger, you should use the dry mounting technique. To mount your prints with this fast and effective technique, you can use Kodak dry mounting tissue, a small tacking iron, a paper cutter, some mount boards, and a mounting press, or an ordinary household iron. First, tack a sheet of dry mounting tissue to the back of the print with a hot tacking iron. Make an X pattern in the middle of the print. This will melt the wax and hold the tissue to the print for the trimming. Now trim both the print and the tissue in a paper cutter to the size you want. Next, carefully position the print on the mounting board. Lift one corner of the print and tack the tissue to the board. Your print will then stay in this position while you place it in the press. Make sure you've set the press for the correct temperature for the dry mount tissue, usually between 180 and 210 degrees Fahrenheit. That's between 82 and 99 degrees Celsius. Cover your print with a smooth, clean, and thoroughly dry piece of paper before you put your print in the press. This will prevent your print from sticking to the press. Leave your print in the press for 30 seconds or so. Then remove your print and allow it to cool under the weight of a large, heavy object, such as a book. If you don't have a press, you can use a household iron to do your mounting. Set the temperature at the low synthetic fabric range and cover your print with a smooth piece of dry paper. Keep the iron moving with light pressure and work from the center of the print toward the edges. Here's another way to dress up your prints. You can use different colored mount boards or mount your prints on colored pieces of art paper. In this case, let's choose the grayish blue art paper to complement the blue toned print. Simply mount the art paper on white mount board and then carefully mount your print on the art paper. This is a proud moment for you. Your printmaking skills are on display for everyone to admire. It's rewarding moments such as this that keep you going, looking for new and even more advanced printing techniques. This program is almost over, but there's no end to the creativity you can apply to black and white printing. For instance, would you like to know how the photographer made the illustration for the cover of the script book? You'll find a detailed explanation of that technique in the back of this book. You can also use the illustrated script book as a step-by-step -step guide for the many advanced printing techniques we've discussed.